How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, February 11th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, we're going to review the games in the Elite performances from yesterday, Wednesday, February 10th. And of course, I'm going to preview the games that are coming up today as we walk through the day, of, as we go through um, the world of sports one day at a time. With the NFL and the MLB seasons being complete, I'm going to start with the NBA, uh, with starting with the primetime matchups in Dallas. The Dallas Mavericks hosted the Atlanta Hawks, and they were able to pull off a 118-117 to win after outscoring Atlanta by 10 points in the fourth quarter to get their 12th win of the season. For the Atlanta Hawks on the night, their starting shooting guard Kevin Herter out of Maryland would finish with 23 points and 8 rebounds in 35 minutes, shooting 9 for 15 from the field, 4 for 7 from 3, and 1 for 2 from the line. There stood the Atlanta Hawks' leading scorer was their starting power forward, John Collins out of Wake Forest, who finished with 33 points and 8 rebounds in 38 minutes, shooting 13 for 18 from the field and a perfect 6 for 6 from the line. Additionally, for the Atlanta Hawks, their elite starting point guard, Trey Young, would finish with 25 five points, seven rebounds and 15 assists in 42 minutes as he shot eight for 22 from the field, four for 11 from three and five for six from the free throw line. For the Dallas Mavericks off the bre- off the bench, their point guard Jalen Brunson would finish with 21 points and five assists in 30 minutes, shooting nine for 18 from the field and one for one from the free throw line. And their leading scorer would be their elite starting point guard Luka Doncic who finished with 28 points, 10 rebounds and 10 assists as well as two blocks in 37 minutes shooting nine for 18 from the field two for seven from three and eight for 10 from the free throw line with this win the dallas mavericks are 12 and 4 which is the 11th best or the fifth worst record in the western conference as they sit eight and a half games behind the first place utah jazz and with this loss the atlanta hawks are sitting at 11 and 13 as they are sitting in the eighth best They're sitting with the eighth best record in the Eastern Conference. They are six and a half games behind the Philadelphia 76ers, and they are currently sitting half a game behind the Raptors and the Pacers alongside the Charlotte Hornets. Jumping out to the other primetime matchup from last night, the Phoenix Suns hosted the Milwaukee Bucks and were able to pull off the 120, 125 to 124 win. After there was a point where the Bucks were up by double digits in the first half, the Suns were able to come back and get a very big win at home to get their 15th of the season. For the Milwaukee Bucks, their leading scorer would be their elite power forward, reigning back-to-back MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo, who finished with 47 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists in 38 minutes, shooting 15 for 23 from the field and 17 for 21 from the free throw line. For the Phoenix Suns in this matchup, their elite starting point guard Chris Paul would finish with 28 points, 3 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals in 32 minutes, shooting 10 for 20 from the field. Four for seven from three and a perfect four for four from the line. And the Phoenix Suns leading scorer would be their elite starting shooting guard, Devin Booker out of Kentucky, who finished with 30 points, six rebounds and three assists in 39 minutes, shooting 11 for 21 from the field, one for four from three and seven for nine from the free throw line. With this win, the Phoenix Suns are 15 and nine, which is the fourth best record in the Western Conference. As a whole, they are four and a half games behind the first place Utah Jazz, and they are two games behind the third place Los Angeles Clippers. With this loss, the Milwaukee Bucks are 16-9, which is the second best record in the Eastern Conference as they are sitting two games behind the Philadelphia 76ers and two games ahead of the Brooklyn Nets for that matter as well. And then jumping out to another game last night, jumping out to D.C., the Washington Wizards hosted the Toronto and now currently the Tampa Bay uh, Raptors as the Raptors were able to beat the Wizards 137 to 115 after outscoring Washington by 12 in the first quarter and by and outscoring them by 12 in the fourth quarter. In this game for the Washington Wizards, their elite starting point guard, Russell Westbrook, would finish with 23 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists in his game back in 34 minutes as he shot 9 for 20 from the field, 3 for 8 from 3, and he made both of his free throw attempts on the night. The leading scorer for the Washington Wizards would be their elite shooting guard, Bradley Beal, who finished with 24 points, 
four rebounds, five assists, and two steals in 37 minutes, shooting eight for 20 from the field, one for six from three, and a perfect seven for seven from the line. For the Toronto Raptors, their starting shooting guard, Norman Powell, would finish with a team high as he finished with 28 points. He actually led the game in scoring, too. Norman Powell had 28 points and seven rebounds, as well as two steals in 32 minutes, as Powell shot 10 for 18 from the field, three for four from three, and a perfect five for five from the line. Their elite starting point guard, Kyle Lowry, would finish with 21 points, four rebounds, five assists, and two steals for the Raptors, as he shot eight for 14 from the field and five for eight from three and 33 minutes and additionally for the raptors they were at least starting power forward pascal siakam would finish with 26 points five rebounds and two assists in 34 minutes as he shot nine for 18 from the field three for four from three and five for seven from the free throw line with this win the toronto raptors are 12 and 13 which is the fifth best record in the eastern conference tied with the indiana pacers both those teams are six games behind the first place Sixers as the, as the Raptors are also one game behind the fourth place Boston Celtics. With this loss, the Washington Wizards are 6-16 six and 16 with the second worst record in the entire Eastern Conference, 10 and a half games out of first place. And jumping to Brooklyn momentarily, the Brooklyn Nets hosted the Indiana Pacers and were able to get the 104-94 win after outscoring the Pacers by 9 in the first quarter and then outscoring them by 23 uh, in the second, which would, which would combine for 32 points in the first half that they would just ride to the end of the game to get their 15th win. For the Indiana Pacers, their leading scorer would be their starting power forward, um, DeMontis Abonis, as he finished with 18 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 steals in 35 minutes, shooting 7 for 20 from the field on the night. For the Brooklyn Nets, their elite starting shooting guard, James Harden, would finish with 19 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists, as well as 5 turnovers in 36 minutes as he shot 4 for 13 from the field, 1 for 6 from 3, and a perfect 10 for 10 from the line. The Nets' leading scorer would be their elite point guard, Kyrie Irving, as Kyrie Irving finished with 30 five points four rebounds eight assists and a couple of blocks in 35 minutes he shot eight for 17 from the field two for six from three and a perfect 17 for 17 from the free throw line with this win the brooklyn nets are 15 and 12 with the third best record in the eastern conference they are four games behind the first place 76ers and they are two games behind the second place bucks and with this loss the indiana pacers are 12 and 13 which ties them with the raptors for the fifth best record in the eastern conference as they are one game behind the fourth place Boston Celtics and they overall they are six games behind the first place 76ers jumping out to Memphis the Memphis Grizzlies hosted the Charlotte Hornets and were able to pull off the 130 to 114 win after outscoring Charlotte by 16 points in the third quarter and able to pull off their 10th win of the season for the Charlotte Hornets in this matchup their elite point guard LaMelo Ball would finish with 17 points five assists and three steals as he also had two rebounds in 28 minutes shooting eight for 15 from the field on the night one for four from three as well as the charlotte hornets leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard terry rogier who finished with 34 points in 33 minutes shooting 12 for 17 from the field six for nine from three and a perfect four for four from the line for the memphis grizzlies their starting shooting guard dylan brooks would finish with 20 points uh, and four assists in 30 minutes as he shot eight for 13 from the field and four for eight from three. Their elite starting point guard, John Moran, would finish with 15 points, three rebounds, and 11 assists in 31 minutes as he also had five turnovers. John Moran shot six for 14 from the field, one for three from three, and two for four from the foul line. And the Memphis Grizzlies leading scorer on the night would be their starting small forward, Kyle Anderson, out of UCLA, who finished with 27 points in 24 minutes, shooting 10 for, 12, 10 for 14 from the field, six for eight from three, and one for two from the foul line. With this win, the Memphis Grizzlies are 10 and 10, which is the ninth best record in the Western Conference. They and the Kings are the only two teams in the Western Conference that are sitting at 500. And because of this, both teams are half a game behind the Warriors and seven and a half games out of first place in the Western Conference. Jumping to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Timberwolves hosted the Los Angeles Clippers, and the Los Angeles Clippers were able to beat the Timberwolves 119 to 112 after outscoring many after scoring Minnesota by 13 points in the third quarter to give them the lead and the momentum for this game. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, their leading scorer amongst their starters would be their shooting guard Malik Beasley out of Florida State, who finished with 21 points and five rebounds in 34 minutes, shooting five for 15 from the field and a perfect seven for seven for the line. 
the uh, the leading scorer for the Minnesota Timberwolves so would be their center off the bench, Nazrian Reed, who would finish with 23 points in 20 minutes as he shot 9 for 13 from the field, 2 for 3 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the line. And making his return for the season would be the Minnesota Timberwolves' elite starting center, Carl Anthony Towns, as he finished with 18 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists in 31 minutes, shooting 8 for 15 from the field and 2 for 7 from 3 on the night. For the Los Angeles Clippers, off the bench, their shooting guard, Lemon Pepper Lou Williams, would finish with 27 points and 5 rebounds, as well as 2 steals in 29 minutes, as he shot 10 for 15 from the field, 2 for 3 from 3, and 5 for 5 from the free throw line. And their leading scorer would be their goaded small forward, Ka- Kawhi Leonard, who would finish with 36 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals, as well as 5 turnovers in 37 minutes, as Kawhi Leonard shot 13 for 25 from the field, 5 Five for six from three and five for seven from the free throw line. With this win, the Los Angeles Clippers are 18 and eight, which is the third best record in the Western Conference. They currently trail the second place Lakers by two games, and they trail the first place Utah Jazz by two and a half games in the conference. They also sit two games ahead of the fourth place Suns, just to give you a little bit of understanding as to where they sit. And with this loss, the Minnesota Timberwolves are 16 and nine, as they sit 14 games out of first place, and they currently have the worst record in the NBA. NBA by half a game. Jumping out to Chicago, the Chicago Bulls hosted the New Orleans Pelicans and the Bulls were able to pull off a 129 to 116 home win after outscoring New Orleans by 10 in the first quarter and outscoring them 40 to 14 by 26 in the third quarter. For the New Orleans Pelicans in this matchup, their starting point guard out of UCLA, Lonzo Ball, would finish with 21 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals in 34 minutes, shooting 6 for 13 from the field, 4 for 10 from 3, and a perfect 5 for 5 from the line. Um, their elite starting small forward, Brandon Ingram out of Duke, Go Duke, would finish with 21 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists in 38 minutes as Brandon Ingram shot 6 for 19 from the field, 2 for 9 from 3, and 7 for 8 from the free throw line. And the New Orleans Pelicans leading scorer would be their elite second year power forward Zion Williamson out of Duke. Once again, go Duke. In this matchup, Zion Williamson would put up 29 points, four rebounds, and two assists in 37 minutes as he shot 12 for 18 from the field and five for six from the free throw line. For the Chicago Bulls, their starting point guard out of UNC, Boo UNC, Kobe White would finish with 30 points and seven assists in 34 minutes as he shot 10 for 20 from the field, eight for 17 from three, and a perfect two for two from the free throw line. And alongside him, the leading scorer for the Chicago Bulls would be their starting shooting guard out of UCLA, Zach Levine, who finished with 46 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and 5 turnovers in 38 minutes as Levine shot 17 for 25 from the field, 9 for 14 from 3, and 3 for 3 from the free throw line. As a, as a duo, Kobe White and Zach Levine made 17 three-pointers, the most in Chicago Bulls history. Um, and just a big win for both these side, for both these players. With this win, the Chicago Bulls are now ten and fourteen, which ties them with the Miami Heat for the fifth worst record in the entire Eastern Conference. As both those teams are seven and a half games out of first place, and they are one game behind the Hornets and the Hawks that are taking up the last two spots in the playoffs. And with this loss, the New Orleans Pelicans are currently sitting at 11 and 13, tied with the Houston Rockets for the second worst, for the third worst record in the Western Conference. Jumping out to Denver, the Denver Nuggets hosted the Cleveland Cavaliers and were able to pull off a 133 to 95. 38 point win over a very solid Cleveland Cavaliers team after outscoring the Cleveland Cavaliers by 17 points in the first quarter and 13 points in the third and then outscoring them by the second in the second and fourth as well just making it even bigger for the Cleveland Cavaliers in this matchup their leading scorer would be their starting center Jared Allen out of Texas who finished with 18 points 10 rebounds and 2 assists in 26 minutes shooting 7 for 11 from the field and 4 for 5 from the free throw line for the Denver Nuggets in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their starting power forward, Paul Millsap, who finished with 22 points uh, and two steals in 27 minutes, shooting seven for eight from the field, two for three from three, and six for seven from the line. Their elite starting point guard, Jamal Murray, would finish with eight points, four rebounds, and four assists in 25 minutes, shooting three for six from the field and two for four from the free throw line. And their elite center, Nikola Jokic, would finish with 12 points, 
six rebounds, 12 assists, and two steals in 30 minutes. He shot five for seven from the field and two for two from the free throw line. With this win, the Denver Nuggets are 13 and 11, which is the seventh best record in the Western Conference. They are half a game behind the Spurs and the Trailblazers as they are six and a half games behind the leading Jazz. And with this loss, the Cleveland Cavaliers are sitting at 10 and 16, which is the fourth worst record in, in the Eastern Conference, eight and a half games out of first place. Jumping to Phoenix, or I'm sorry, jumping to Los Angeles for the last game of the night. The Los Angeles Lakers, the defending champs, hosted the Oklahoma City Thunder for the second time in a three-night stretch. As this game went to overtime for the second, for, as this game went to overtime for the second straight time in this matchup, and the Los Angeles Lakers would pull off the one-point win, especially coming off of a big go-ahead three from Wesley Matthews to put this game out of reach for the Lakers to win their 20th game of the season. For the Oklahoma City Thunder in this matchup, um, their starting shooting guard, Kenrick Williams, would finish with 24 points on the night. He also had six rebounds and three steals, as well as five turnovers in 40 minutes, as he would shoot 11 for 14 from the field and two for four from three. And the leading scorer for the Oklahoma City Thunder would be their starting center out of Florida, Al Horford, who finished with 25 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, and four steals in 34 minutes, shooting 11 for 18 from the field, one for four from three, and two for two from the free throw line. For the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers, off the bench, their center Montrez Harrell would finish with 20 points um, in 33 minutes as he also had two blocks. He shot 8 for 10 from the field and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading score for the Los Angeles Lakers would be their goaded small forward LeBron James, who finished with 25 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals, as well as 5 turnovers in 41 minutes as LeBron shot 9 for 20 from the field. 3 for 9 from 3 and a perfect 4 for 4 from the free throw line. With this win, the Los Angeles Lakers are 20 and 6. They are the second team in the NBA to hit 20 wins on the season behind the Utah Jazz. They are currently half a game behind the Utah Jazz as the Jazz are sitting at 20 and 5. Um, but with this win, no, but, but but with this win, they put the pressure on the Utah Jazz to win their next game as the Utah as the Los Angeles Lakers, the defending champions, are coming at the door. They are knocking on the door of the Utah Jazz, and with this loss, the OKC Thunder are ten and fourteen, which is the second worst record in the Western Conference. They are nine and a half games out of first place, and they are nine games behind the Thunder to, or behind the Los Angeles Lakers. Doing that math. And looking forward to what's going on today because today is Thursday, starting with the primetime matchups at 7.30. The Rockets are going to host the Heat on TNT as John Wall and the Rockets and Victor Oladipo look to lead their forces against Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and the reigning Eastern Conference champions. And then after that at 10 o'clock, the Blazers are going to host the 76ers on TNT as Damian Lillard and Joel Embiid are both having MVP-esque seasons. So it'll be very interesting to see these two teams face off against one another. And then filling in the cracks at 7 30 the celtics are going to host the raptors at eight o'clock the pistons are going to host the pacers and then at 10 o'clock the warriors are going to host the magic alongside the trailblazer 76ers game jumping really quickly to college basketball to give you a hint of what's going on out there fifth ranked villanova hosted unranked marquette and they were able to beat them 96 to 64 as villanova outscored marquette by 24 in the second half behind jeremiah robinson's 27 points and eight rebounds with this win Villa, fifth ranked Villanova is now 13 and 2 as they are 8 and 1 in the Big East and with this loss unranked Marquette is now 9 and 11 as they are now 5 and 9 in the Big East eighth ranked Houston went to the University of South Florida as Houston was able to pull off the 82 to 65 win out, outscoring South Florida by nine in the second half behind Quentin Grimes is 29 points with this win eighth ranked Houston is 17 is in two as they are 11 and two in the American Conference with this loss unranked South Florida is seven and six as they are three and four in the American Conference ninth ranked University of Virginia went to Atlanta to face off against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the and the Hokies were able to be or the Virginia Cavaliers I'm sorry were able to be Georgia Tech 57 to 49 behind Trey Murphy the third's 18 points and five rebounds with this win ninth ranked Virginia is now 14 and three as they are 10 and one in the ACC and with this loss unranked Georgia Tech is down nine and seven as they are five and five in the ACC 10th ranked Missouri went to Ole Miss as Ole Miss was able to pull off a home win to beat 10th ranked Missouri 80 to 59, outscoring Mizzou by 16 points in the second half behind Jarkel Joyner's 21 points. 
with this win unranked Ole Miss is now 11 and 8 they are 6 and 6 in the SEC and with this loss 10th ranked Missouri is 13 and 4 as they are 6 and 4 in the SEC and then 25th ranked Rutgers went to 15th ranked Iowa and the Hawkeyes were able to beat Rutgers 79 to 66 behind Joe Wisecamp's 26 points and 10 rebounds with this win, 15th ranked Iowa is now 14 and 6 as they are 8 and 5 on the in the Big Ten. With this loss, 25th ranked Rutgers is 11 and 7 as they drop to 7 and 7 in the Big Ten. 16th ranked Tennessee hosted unranked Georgia and were able to beat the Bulldogs 89 to 81 after outscoring Georgia by 18 points in the first half behind Jaden Springer's 30 points. With this win, 16th ranked Tennessee. Was, is now 14 and 4 and they're 7 and 4 in the SEC and with this loss unranked Georgia was 12 and 7 as they are 5 and 7 in the SEC. And now know if it matters Keon Johnson for Tennessee had an insane dunk this game. And then last but not least 21st ranked Wisconsin went to Nebraska to face off against the Cornhuskers and in this one 21st ranked Wisconsin was able to beat unranked Nebraska 61 to 48 behind Brad Davison's nine points three rebounds and three assists with this win 21st ranked Wisconsin is now 15 and 6 as they are 9 and 5 in the Big Ten and with this loss unranked Nebraska is 4 and 11 as they are 0 and 8 in the Big Ten and looking forward to today's matchups at five o'clock 24th ranked purdue is going to face off against unranked minnesota on espn2 and then at 10 o'clock unranked washington is going to host 20th ranked usc and that's going to be on pack 10 as usc is 15 and 3 washington is 3 and 14 this looks to be a very one-sided matchup as well really quickly looking out to what's going on in the nhl there were two big games yesterday um, starting in New York City, the Boston Bruins were able to beat the New York Rangers 3-2 to two in overtime uh, as Marshallin would score the goal for Boston, one of the big goals for them to help them get through. With this win, Boston is currently sitting at the very top of the East Division as they are two, as they are two points ahead of the Philadelphia Flyers at the top. And then the Toronto Maple Leafs were able to beat the Montreal Canadiens in Montreal after scoring three goals in the third period. Um, to give them their 11th win of the season. With this win, the Toronto Maple Leafs are sitting at the very top of the North Division by five points over the Montreal Canadiens. So it was a much-needed win there. And then looking forward to what's going on today for Thursday hockey um, on terms in terms of primetime games. The Canadians are going to host the Oilers, and that game's going to be on ESPN Plus at 7 o'clock. And that's going to be the only game that's going to make prime time as I will cover the other games as they as they happen, as they play out today. And I'll get back to you tomorrow how as to how those games shape up the season. And last but not least, jumping into what's going on with soccer on the international stage, because there were some good soccer games, some very important ones as well. Starting with the English FA Cup, Manchester City was able to beat Swansea City 3-1. to one. Their second goal coming from their elite English forward, Raheem Sterling, um, to help them advance to the next round of the English FA Cup. Another team that advanced was Everton over Tottenham Hotspur. For Tottenham, their fourth goal would come from their elite English striker, Harry Kane. This game would go into extra time, but it would be Bernard scoring for Everton to send Everton through to the next round and eliminate Tottenham Hotspur right here in this very round. And in the Italian Coppa Italia, Atalanta was able to beat Napoli 3-1 to one as they will advance to play Juventus in the final for the Italian Super Cup or for, or for the Italian Cup. In the, Hispan in the Spanish Copa del Rey, Sevilla FC was able to beat Barcelona 2-1 to one in the first leg as the second goal for Sevilla will come from former Barcelona midfielder Ivan Rakitic so that was a very that, that that ended up being a very big development for them as well and then the French Coupe de France PSG was able to be con thanks to Moise Keane's 49th minute goal and they were able to advance to the next round of that and those are the big games from yesterday looking forward to today's matchups for the English FA Cup at three o'clock, Chelsea will face off against Barnsley to go off to try to go off into the next round, and of course they can they can at least go further than Tottenham there to at least uh, to represent London in the next round, and going to the FIFA Club World Cup. It'll be the final as the as Bayern Munich will take on Tigres, the top team from Mexico, and then Al Ali, the top team from. 
Egypt, or the top team from Africa, will face off against Palmeiras, which is the top Brazilian team. They're the top team from South America for the third place team or for the third place game. And with that said, that's everything that's going on today. Today is Thursday, February 11th, 2011 out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and I want to thank everybody once again for listening into this piece. I hope all is well, and I will get back to you tomorrow once all of these games today have finished as we go through this world of sports one day at a time. Once again, I am James Sims, and this is The Elite, and I will get back to you tomorrow for Friday, February 12th, 2021. Once again, thank you for listening to this piece and peace out.